So you want to make your characters even more powerful or just completely busted? Well, one of the best ways to do that is through the game's sigil system, which can be a little scary when you first encounter them and start messing around with it. With us having now defeated the final boss of the game many, many times and putting hundreds of hours into it, we thought it might be a good idea to give you guys some useful tips to help you build your characters. So let's go through it and tell us in the comments which characters are you currently maining and building. First, let's get you a basic understanding of these sigils. These are like equipable gear pieces that enhance your character by giving them various traits. Traits are basically like perks that increase your attack, your defense, your dodging, and more. Some of these traits are also conditional, meaning that you only get the benefit of increased attack if you sacrifice some health in return, like the ever-popular Tyranny Sigil. You can equip these sigils in the gear menu, and initially, you only have a few slots, but as you progress through the mastery tree, you will unlock new slots for a total of 10. Sigils come in different rarity levels and this impacts how powerful they can be. Each trait will have a maximum amount of benefit that you can get from them based on the amount of levels that you've invested in each trait. You can get more levels in these traits by upgrading your sigils, which is done at the blacksmith or by equipping multiple of the same sigil. In the early game, you won't be able to max out the skills as you will only be able to equip a few of them and lower level versions. But when you get to the end game, you'll be getting sigils that can be maxed out to 15 levels on each one, making it much easier to reach the cap. For example, the damage cap sigil has 65 levels in total, and each level will raise your damage cap, so even with legendary sigils, you will need to equip quite a few of these and upgrade them to ensure you're hitting the highest damage possible. You can see what a sigil does and your current level by going to the sigil menu and selecting gear info or trait details for more expanded information on each one. As you get further into the game, you will start receiving sigils that come with two traits on each one, making it much easier to create builds and allows you to start replacing other sigil slots. You will identify these by the plus symbol next to them and they normally roll with a base trait and then a random trait at the same level. So now you understand what sigils are, how do you go about getting the good ones or the ones that you need? Well, sigils come from various sources such as quests, chests, side quests, and more. But one of the more accessible sources for targeting sigils will actually be specific quests. Due to the amazing quality of life in the game, you can actually see which one you will get from each quest. Every quest has a first time clear reward that is usually a sigil or some other type of valuable item. If you select the quest and go into the details, you can actually see exactly what sigil you will be getting. In addition to this, there are side goal rewards and drops that can also be sigils. If you tab over to them, you can actually see exactly what what you have a chance to get. This means you can look through each quest and target a specific one that you need for your build and farm it until you actually get it. In addition to this method, once you've completed the game, there is another option that opens up for you and that is transmuting sigils at the Knickknack Shack. To do this, you need to trade items, older sigils or right stones to get tickets. This then allows you to use those tickets to get a random sigil back in return, making it one of the best ways to get sigils without needing to quest. The transmute has different levels depending on your progression from the mid to the end game, and you can see the level of the sigil that you will get from it in the showcase. After this, when you get into the deep end game, and we're talking the maniac or proud difficulty level, you will unlock Trans Marvel. This will give you a randomly rolled 5 plus sigil, a high end right stone or a character specific sigil that's maxed out. However, it will require you to do 5 or 6 base transmutes in order to unlock it. We did just mention that you can get character specific sigils from the Trans Marvel, and these are sigils that really let you lean into a particular character's playstyle, and we can see that with Percival's as an example, which adds more damage and movement speed to his unique attack mechanic Schlacht. From what we've currently seen from our own progression, there are two different unique sigil traits that you can get per character and they can roll on the same sigil, but it's incredibly rare and you won't unlock this until deep into the end game. Another source of sigils is to actually just trade directly for them at the Knickknack Shack, as you can use the trade treasure or the Dahlia badges to get a variety of useful sigils. So keep an eye out on the available sigils in the Knickknack Shack in case there's a good one that could massively boost your character. On top of all of this, there are extra very rare sigils that you can seemingly only get from curios once you've unlocked the ability to get them appraised in Seed Hollow. At Zathba in Seed Hollow, you can trade your curios to get sigils, materials, and other unique items. For example, there is one sigil that will boost your damage based on how many skills you have equipped, or the War Elemental sigil that is pretty busted as it changes all of your damage to the type that an enemy is weak to. There are a lot of sigils in the game, and you're going to need to test and try out different 
different ones to see what's best for your character and their build. The best way to do that if you're building a good or busted character is to go into the training room. To get there, go to the Grand Cipher and interact with the training dummy on the other end of the ship. It has various modes for you to select, but the base mode is good for testing your damage. If you're looking to hit harder and test your damage, just go up to the dummy and hit it a couple times, then change around your sigils and see if you're dealing more or less damage. You can also do this training with a time limit by going to the time limit option in the settings menu, and this will allow you to test your overall DPS across that time, which is a much better metric rather than a single hit. Once you've eventually found the perfect build, you can then create loadouts by going to the gear menu and selecting loadouts, and then saving it here so you can revert back to it at any time. Something else that will be super useful for you to know is that you can sort and filter through your sigils in the actual gear menu. By selecting sorting by rarity, it makes it much easier to see your powerful sigils at the top, and then you can use left and right on your d-pad to do page up or page down. A good indication that you're building a more powerful character is your power level, but there are some pitfalls to be aware of here. Certain stats like health will dramatically boost your power level, but when you actually go and fight something, you'll find that you'll be lacking in damage, while something like stamina or percentage adding skills aren't really reflected in this power rating or at all, even though they boost your damage massively. You can also look at the character screen to get a quick overview of your character's stats, as well as their base stats, but like we said, your best bet is to go and hit something to actually find out. We will have videos showing you some of the top tier sigils in the game, but we wanted to make sure you all know what you were doing first. So hopefully now you know what sigils are, where to find the OP ones, and how to test your build to make a busted character. We wish you good luck on your builds, and if you find a good source to get the War Elemental Sigil, then please let us know, because 2-6 got two of them, and I don't have any, and I've been farming for ages.